coming up. This is a company that is worth $40 billion, has received hundreds of millions of dollars in government handouts, which, let's be reminded, are taxpayer dollars. And yet, this is a company that just laid off 6,100 of those taxpayers. Is that justified? I'm curious to know what role diversity, equity, and inclusion policies play when deciding to fire 5,000 Canadian workers. For example, do you have separate Zoom calls for the black workers and the white workers, or what, what, how do you approach that? You and your organization have destroyed local news in this country. You should be ashamed. I'm telling you right now, as a 40-year employee of CTV, I've watched you and your network absolutely destroy every 216 First Avenue North. You've destroyed Vancouver. You've st destroyed Edmonton, Calgary, Saskatoon. I can go on and on and on. This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bibbick. Uh, Bell has received a pile of money from the government through enhanced media funds, uh, spectrum subsidies, COVID paychecks, um, and then various tax credits, of course, that have been added to that as well. I'm just wondering what that exact dollar figure is since 2015. Uh, I wouldn't have that exact figure since 2015 at my uh, per, you know, immediate disposal. Would you be able to tell us in the last five years? Couldn't tell you that either for the last five years. What about in the last year? Um, well, which components? So there would have been no wage subsidy dollars in the last year because we're well past COVID. Um, Canada Media Fund, I don't know, Robert, if you have uh, that information. I, I don't have that at my fingertips, but we can certainly provide it to the committee if you wish. We would appreciate that. Send it to the clerk and we distribute it. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Thomas. That would be great. Just to clarify, so I'm, I'm asking for the total dollar amount that's been received from the Federal Government of Canada since 2015 and that that be tabled with the committee. Um, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just highlight a few that I found. Um, not everything is disclosed online, but I, I did discover through uh, poring over documents that Bell has received over $260 million in spectrum projects, um, $122 million in pandemic subsidies, even though you performed actually at your best during that time. Um, and then a healthy portion of the $600 million media bailout. So there's hundreds of millions of dollars that has been given to Bell. And yet here we are discussing the, the cutting of 6,100 jobs between June 2023 and February 2024. I, I find that rather rich. Now, tell me, how much is Bell Media worth? Oh, there's no current valuation of Bell Media as a separate entity within the uh, the, the the BCE um, within Thank all you. of BCE I, now. In terms of, let me. I'd like sorry, to address some of these issues. Just, in terms of, I'll just clarify. Well, Mr. I'd like Mr. to. I'd Mr. like Bivik, to clarify. Can you please uh, order. I wasn't. Uh, you want asking, to clarify your question, you, yes. Ms. Thomas? I'll just ahead. clarify. I wasn't asking about Bell Media. I was just asking about Bell. How much is Bell worth? Oh, we look at. We could look at the market cap of Bell today. If you're asking about the market cap. Of Bell today. We're sure while we talk, Robert can can dig that up in ten seconds. I, I'm sure he can. I'm sure he has it right now. Yeah. Yeah. What is but that's a function. Of, that's a function of the share the share price at any given minute. So the the market cap of market capitalization of Bell is different now than it was an hour ago. Okay. Do you, do you, do, you, do, you, do you think that it's in the range of like ten billion? Well, the market capitalization is significantly higher than that, but again, it's it's decreased significantly, do you, do you unfortunately, in the billion? last couple of months, given the share price. Twenty I'd rather billion. Have the number. I'm just curious. Maybe you can just tell me if I'm getting warmer. Twenty billion. Sorry, I was having trouble with my microphone. The current the current yeah, market you? cap of the current market cap of Bell is about forty million forty billion dollars. Thank you so much. Uh, so, so Bell uh, has a, a worth of about forty billion, with a B, forty billion dollars. Um, this is a company that is worth forty billion dollars, has received hundreds of millions of dollars in government handouts, which, let's be reminded, are taxpayer dollars, and yet this is a company that just laid off sixty-one hundred of those taxpayers. Is that justified? 
Okay, may I, I now I, may I, I now answer all these these questions? There were several there. So having there's having just Canadian one. companies, there's, Mr. Bivik, there's just one well, question. Well, having having well, strong just one Canadian question. companies just one is, a very, Mr. is a Bivik, fundamentally please, good thing. I think Ms. Thomas is trying to clarify the question. Well, Chair, if there was, Thank I've not yet was, had an there was, opportunity there was just to give one to, question. I've not yet had an opportunity to even ha provide one sentence of an answer. Asking so I'd just like just an opportunity one to comment. Question, she said, and not three. Mr. Thank Vivek, you. you're right. You you actually have answered with a few sentences. You said, "I don't know," about five different times, maybe six different times. So I'm hoping perhaps you'll know the answer to this question, and that is, is it justified that you just laid off 6,100 employees in the last eight months when you have received hundreds of millions of dollars from the federal government, and it is a company worth $40 billion? I would think that we'd want strong Canadian companies that can continue to employ tens of thousands of Canadians. We employ 40,000 Canadians with good paying jobs. Uh, we are right now faced with an economy where we have um, difficult foreign exchange with the U.S. Most of our inputs are in U.S. dollars. The costs of inputs are increasing. Inflation is rampant in Canada. Unemployment's at 6.1 percent in March alone. Mr. Bibic, our I'm, content costs for go to my next are increasing. I, I we have a massive. I don't know that you have an answer. We have a for massive me. productivity issue in Canada. So these are the macroeconomic factors that. All Canadian companies, including Bell, are dealing with, and we're trying to adapt and adjust so that we can continue to grow, which is a good thing, okay. and that we can continue to hire and retain Thank and you, employ 40,000 Canadian Thank companies. You, Mr. Bivik. That's seconds. a very good thing. Mr. Bivik, I'll just take a, a moment here just to remind you about this committee. Um, as a member of parliament, a duly elected member of parliament, I sit here at this table able to ask any question that I wish. Um, and, and your job is to answer those questions not in a way that you wish to answer or to make the spiel that you wish to, to put out there, but rather in a factual manner. And if you fail to do so, we have every ability to bring you back in a summons. Chair, I fully respect um, the committee's work and my role in answering the questions of the committee. In fact, I, um, I welcome public policy discussions and over my 20-year career in this industry, I've appeared before many committees and regulatory proceedings and industry roundtables, and I will always treat this uh, committee and the process with the utmost respect. Uh, it's a fundamental part of what my, uh, my career has been about. We are now uh, ended the six-minute question and answer time. Uh, Canadians for Tax Fairness indicated that over a four-year period of time, that using tax evasion tactics, including tax loopholes, that Bell as a company was able to avoid paying $1 billion in taxes. I'm wondering how much do you plan to avoid paying this year in taxes? Oh, you, I'd need to get, if you could, if Chair, if, if the Honourable Member could kindly provide uh, that report, we'd be happy to provide a, a response to the clerk. I'm not aware of that report. Absolutely. It's publicly available. It's the Canadians for Tax Fairness, and I'm sure they have a public website as well. We can absolutely make that clear to you, but I'm curious about how much you're trying to avoid paying taxes again this year. I, I will take a, we will take a look at the report and file an answer so we can give a, a considered answer to the, to the very good question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bibic, uh, in the last eight months, you have cut a total of 6,100 jobs. Um, in February, just a couple months ago, there were 4,800 jobs cut. Uh, according to legislation, um, the federal labor standards, Bell was required to give the government 16 weeks notice of this layoff. I'm curious as to whether or not that was given. I apologize, I was muted remotely. Uh, we, uh, we complied with all legislation as it relates to, um, to the actions that were taken with respect to the positions in question. Okay, so I just want to confirm then, you gave 16 weeks notice that these layoffs were going to take place in February. No, we complied with all requirements as it relates to the process by which we are permitted to reduce the, the, the positions in question. I understand. So according to the federal labor standards, you're supposed to give a 16 weeks notice or seek an exemption. Which one is it? We complied with uh, all the requirements with respect to uh, federal labor laws in this respect. Right. So I'm just curious, did you seek the exemption or did you give the 16 weeks notice to the government? No, we complied with all requirements that we 
were imposed under federal law. M Mr. Bibic, is there a reason why you're evading the question? There's only two choices here. You either had to seek exemption based on the code, or you had to get, give 16 weeks notice. Which one was it? Rob, do you have a, uh, Robert, do you have a precise answer to that? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, the Mr. Malcolmson, go ahead. The question's been asked and answered now, I think, four times. We, we have complied with applicable federal legislation. If you require more detail, we're happy to provide it, but we've fully complied with our labor legislation requirements in implementing this workforce reduction. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm baffled as to why a straight answer is not being granted. There are two options here. Either 16 weeks notice has to be given to the Government of Canada that these layoffs are taking place, or an exemption has to be granted from the Government of Canada. It's one of these two options. So which one did Bell take? I think we've answered the question where, no, where sir, notice... No, sir, with all due respect, I don't think you have. I think you continue to evade the question, uh, which looks rather shady and as if Bell Media has something, or Bell, sorry, has something to hide. What are you hiding? In the, in the short time we're being given to answer your questions, we, we are telling you that short time either either you know that you provided notice or you sought an exemption that's not difficult you two lead the company why do you not have answers to these questions what we know is we can you laid off 6100 people and you don't know the process that you followed to do that we know the process and we comply mr bivik did you receive a 13 million dollars this is what you get paid $13 million for? I'm, to the honorable member, Mr. we've Bivik. answered the question. There, there's actually- Mr. Bivik, you have not been able to answer a single one of my questions directly today. M Ms. Thomas, we, we gave, we complied with labor legislation. We gave the requisite notice and we've complied. So you asked the question, we gave the notice, we're compliant. You have two choices. Either you gave 16 weeks notice or you sought an exemption. We gave notice, as I just said. You gave notice 16 weeks ahead of time. We gave the requisite notice, yes. So 16 weeks ahead of time, you gave notice to the government that you were going to lay off 4,800 people. I've answered the question. We gave the requisite required notice in connection with the restructuring, yes. What was the requisite notice? The requisite notice was the notice that we gave depending on which element of the workforce was affected. How, how far ahead of time I've, did you have to give that? It, it may have varied. That's why I've offered to provide complete details in terms of who we notified when in compliance with our requirements. Okay, but the government knew about these layoffs. Well, we provided 20 notice. Seconds. You provided notice to the. We uh, we gave notice and provided um, salary, the minimum salary of sixteen weeks, so we were fully compliant. Why did it take me five minutes to get a straight answer? The, the answer hasn't changed, which is that we were compliant. No, it absolutely has. You evaded for the first four and a half minutes, and then finally in the last 30 seconds, I finally got an answer. Why? Do you, do you think what? this is a joke? Do you enjoy wasting my time? These are technical issues. There's nothing which... technical about it. Either you know the legislation or you don't. You either followed it or you didn't, and you said you did. Therefore, you must know what, you did, what, what was carried out. There were specific details and requirements under the legislation that I knew we complied with, but I didn't have the specific details at my fingertips when you first asked the question, but I knew that we were fully compliant, which is why I answered as such, and the answer has not changed. Sorry, Ms. Ms. Thomas, the time is up. Your board recently gave you a 20% raise. If you truly feel for the thousands of workers you laid off, would you consider taking a 9% reduction in your own salary? As I mentioned earlier, the... Um, 
the so yes, yes or no. have been have been thinned out significantly since I became CEO. So because we're always vigilant around uh, around uh, costs and around the number of executives we we have, and that's resulted in a forty percent uh, decrease in compensation. Well, I take that as a no. The direct Thank reports you. of the well, CEO. Mr. Bibic, I just want to be really clear here. Uh, my question is with regards to the federal labor standards having to do with termination, layoff, or dismissal. Uh, my question is not whether or not you gave the employees adequate notice, but whether or not you gave the government adequate notice. Um, according to the group termination clause, you must give 16 weeks before the termination of employment takes effect, and you must give that notice to the labor program's head of compliance and enforcement, and immediately send a written copy to the government of Canada. So I'm curious if that was done. The, um, uh, the legislative requirements also allow for the giving of notice combined with guaranteed 16 weeks salary continuous continuance, my apologies. So if we give 16 weeks salary continuance, um, as well as notice, we are in compliance with the federal legislative requirements. So I just want to be clear, you gave notice to the government of Canada 16 weeks before terminating. If we give notice to the government of Canada before the implementation of the job reductions, but combine that with a guaranteed 16 weeks of salary continuance to all employees, even those who may not otherwise have been eligible for a full 16 weeks, then we are compliant. So again, um, I'm just looking for clarification then. You are confirming one way or the other, just yes or no. Did you give the government of Canada 16 weeks notice before terminating the employment of these 4,800 individuals in February? It is not required that the federal government get 16 weeks advance notice if the federal government gets advance notice and each employee is otherwise guaranteed 16 weeks salary continuance, even in cases where they otherwise would not be. Uh, Mr. Bibic, I have the federal labor standards in front of me and that is not what I'm reading. You are required to give the government 16 weeks notice or apply for an exemption. I've provided the full answer to the process that we adopted, which is in full compliance with federal regulatory requ federal legislative requirements. Mr. Bibic, when did you tell the government that you would be laying off these employees? That I don't know. But you just said that you're in full compliance. How can you be sure of that? Because I know we gave the government notice and I know that we guaranteed each employee 16 weeks of salary continuance, even in cases when they otherwise would not have been eligible for it. Mr. Bibic, I, I understand that you're, you're treating this as a bit of a game and, and mincing your words. Um, I'm just looking for a straight answer. You, you said that you gave the government notice. Perhaps you can call on your colleague if you need some assistance here. Um, when was that notice given? Why, why don't we, if, if we may, Madam Chair, provide uh, an undertaking to provide that information to the committee in writing so that you have the fulsome explanation in front of you? Your questions are important, but I, in the time permitted, it's difficult to answer them. With all due respect, you're welcome to table a lengthy reply and, and nuance your words. But in this moment, I'm just asking for yes or no. Was 16 weeks notice given to the government? You, you seem to be indicating yes. And so I'm curious then, on what date was that 16 weeks notice given? So that's not what I said. I said that if an employer commits to providing 16 weeks salary continuance, then the 16 week advance notice to the government, you can follow a different path than the one that the honorable member has outlined. But we did give notice to the federal government. I just don't have the specific date at my fingertips. We, we gave notice on February 8th, Madam Chair. Thank you. That didn't seem so hard. Bravo. All right, February 8th, the government was given advance notice that you would be laying off 4,800 people from Bell Canada. Thank you, I very much appreciate that. Now you're telling me then that that notice was given on the exact same day that the public found out. But again, according to the labor standards, um, notice is supposed to be in advance. Why was it done the day of? Well, or, or two things, the, the go ahead, Rob. I, 
Sorry, I was just, we, we've given the answer. Uh, we provided the notice in compliance with the legislation. We're happy to provide more details if you require more details, but the question's been asked and answered repeatedly. It, it hasn't actually. Um, I just found out less than a minute ago that you gave notice on February 8th. That's the same day that it was publicly uh, declared that these individuals, these 4,800 individuals would be fired. That's not exactly advanced notice, which is what's required under the federal label standards. Why wasn't advanced notice given? We provided the answer to that. There's a path, which is if you guarantee salary continuance for 16 weeks, that is a path even where the employee otherwise would not be entitled to 16 weeks. The second point is that while we gave advance notice, while we gave notice to the government on February 8th, those uh, job reductions then all take place on February 8th all at the same time. Thank you, Ms. Bibich, uh, let's talk, shall we? Um, in recent years, several of Bell Media's female employees have left your company amid accusations of discrimination. Patricia Jagernoth left CP24, claiming she was being tokenized as a black woman. Danielle uh, Graham left CTV eTalk, claiming that it was in part due to sexism. And of course, we've seen multiple media reports suggesting that Lisa Laflamme was pushed out of CTV News due to ageism. Now, of course, Bell celebrates its supposed commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. It is all over your website, Mr. Bibich. But I am curious to know uh, if you can clarify to Canadians, should Canadians be concerned about a pattern of deplorable employment practices at Bell Media? So we uh, thank you for, uh, for the question. Uh, the, um, the issue that's being surfaced is uh, very, very important and we do take it very seriously. We have, I'm very proud of the talented group of diverse journalists that we have across the country. And, um, you know, the, the, the job reductions were um, kind of difficult and unfortunate. I mean, a, a smaller number of the broader number uh, affected Bell Media directly, but we have the same percentage now as before of, uh, of diverse uh, journalists, and we have a lot of phenomenal you know, uh, accomplishments and success stories like Sandy Ronaldo, who se celebrated 50 years on air. TSN would be a great example. We have uh, incredibly talented women broadcasters and you know we were the first to have an all women NBA broadcast for example and if you take the broader bell um, if you look at kind of the CEO and the direct reports that's me and the people who um, who uh, directly uh, report to me before I became CEO 15 percent uh, were women now it's 30 percent and then one level below that the senior vice president layer of, of BCE in 2019 20 percent 20 percent were women and now it's double that so Mr. we take Bibic, it seriously. There's Mr. more Bibic, work to do, of course. It's if never, I could just suggest, yeah, we got to do more. It sounds to me like you may be proving some of the allegations correct in your response, given you're engaging in tokenism in your answer. None of this uh, hiring of people based on quotas or percentages, as you seem to be indicating, would necessarily uh, make Bell immune from the allegations made of tokenism, racism, sexism, and ageism. So do you have a response to those concerns and whether Canadians should be worried that one of the largest media companies in the country has a pattern of deplorable employment practices? No, I would um, think we, it's an issue that we take very seriously. So if there are incidents, we will investigate them and make sure they are addressed. But more broadly, we, um, we seek to do better each and every year. And we, should, we, we want to have the as diverse uh, a workforce as possible at all levels of the company, men, women, and of course, uh, talent uh, and employees from uh, from community, you know, black, indigenous, and people of color community, those communities as well. It's a very important issue. Thank you for, for raising it. When you laid off uh, 5,000 workers, and if you could not evade it this time, I'd appreciate it. When you laid off 5,000 workers, what percentage of them were black or indigenous? I don't have these specific numbers at, at my fingertips, but we could file that with the clerk. Yeah, that would be great if you could file that, because uh, I'd be curious to know what role diversity, equity, and inclusion policies play when deciding to fire 5,000 Canadian workers. For example, do you have separate Zoom calls for the black workers and the white workers, or what, what, how do you approach that? Well, we... Uh, so what, are you referring to, again, the... 
the the employees who form part the unionized non-management unionized employees or the management groups because the management groups would have had individual I'm talking those, in total those in management would have had individual you, you've meetings. given us a word salad so far about how important DEI is to your company and yet it doesn't seem that you thought about DEI when firing 5,000 Canadian workers so I'd like some clarity on the role DEI plays when firing 5,000 people uh, Madam Chair, I'm not sure why uh, the Honourable Member phrased the question in, in that manner. I, I did indicate that as it relates to Bell Media, we have the same percentage now of diverse journalists as we uh, did uh, prior to the restructuring. And as it relates to how we communicate with employees, they were individual meetings. And there was a separate process with respect to the unionized employees that we discussed in advance with Unifor, the union in question, that, who uh, fully endorsed the process that we adopted which I'm happy to go into if we have the time, but... No, you don't, actually. This time has now got one second left in it, so... Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it takes decades to establish trust in Canadian newsrooms, something that CTV has taken pride of over the time that Mr. Bibic, uh, Bell Media, has owned CTV twice in the last 40 years. Local news has always been the staple for CTV Network. Anybody can buy American programming, and we'll get to that in a moment. But it takes investment into newsrooms to solidify the integrity of the entire network. By eliminating, and you have eliminated, noon newscasts. You've eliminated late-night newscasts. You've eliminated weekend newscasts, giving many outlets in Saskatchewan, in Western Canada, in fact, all over this country, little say. You have destroyed what has taken decades to build the CTV network. I know because I was one of them for four decades. I worked three to midnight. I worked weekends. I worked holidays. I cherish those times. Why? Because I gave back to the community. You have gutted local newsrooms in this country. Don't tell me you've had it. We're down to one hour a day live in Saskatoon. Regina does everything. We in Saskatoon only have one newscast now, six to seven. We had six and a half hours of local news every day until you made your decision in the spring. You and your organization have destroyed local news in this country. You should be ashamed. I'm telling you right now, as a 40-year employee of CTV, I've watched you and your network absolutely destroy every 216 First Avenue North. You've destroyed Vancouver. You've destroyed Edmonton, Calgary, Saskatoon. I can go on and on and on. What have you done at the boardroom to say that you've invested in news when I have the other facts that say you have pulled every, absolutely every available person in every newsroom in this country that belonged to Bell Media? Madam Chair, I, I, I do need a little bit of time to respond to you know, some s serious allegations here, and, and there are serious issues that are being raised, I would like a bit of time. I won't take too long. Um, we are making sure that we deliver more stories to Canadian viewers. Uh, as far as it relates to the noon hour newscasts that were cancelled, the ratings have been down 43%. Canadians have shifted to watch, engaging with our news digitally. I'll give you one very good example. The solar eclipse on Monday happened at about 3.28 or 3.26 Eastern time. People weren't going to wait till noon the next day or 5.30 p.m. that day. However, the engagement with CP24 online and on YouTube were was at a record high. Never before have Canadians engaged with us to such a degree because we broke the story, covered the story as it happened. That's how we're delivering more news. We're investing in news. We're just doing it oh, differently. The way consumers are engaging. Come on, give me a break. You're, you're bringing numbers like you've lost $185 million for Bell Media. It's $300 million invested in okay. news every year. Let me say this then. How much are you spending on American program? You've just said in committee you spend $1.7 million on content. What is that content? Is it American football? Is it NFL? Is it... I can go through American programming here. 
Uh, Bob Hartz, do you want the amazing race, the mass singer, the Connors, the voice, the good doctor, the rookie? 1.7 million in contact and uh, content, you said. How much of that is American programming that you're putting on CTV stations in prime time from 7 to 10? Give me the number. You said you invest $1.7 million. Bell Media, what are you spending on American program? Thank you. It's $1.7 billion that we invest, and, and the investments that we make in, uh, in a U.S. program or a foreign programming generate significant advertising revenue that we can then use to fund programming, Canadian programming like Sullivan's Crossing, Sight Unseen, Children Ruin Everything, Acting Good, Little Bird, The Trades, Late Bloomer, Shortsy, Letter Kenny, uh, Mr. Burbank, Amazing Race Canada, Highway news? Through Hell. Timber how about Kite, investing Rose in Battle, local Canada, news? Why am Slaycation, I down to one hour? Thunder Bay. Can you invest oh. in local news? Why do we have we no news now in Saskatoon? I got one hour. Why was Vancouver cut back? Why was Calgary? Why was Edmonton? You're investing all right. You're investing in American program. Take some of that $1.7 billion and put it in newsrooms in Canadian uh, cities in this country. That's what people want. CTV built up a loyal audience. You have destroyed it since you came CEO in January of 2020. I am so happy I left Bell Media and CTV when I did in 2015, because when you arrived on the scene, you've been a disgrace, and Bell Media has not been the same since then. We, uh, I want to thank Hi. I want to thank the honourable member for significant contributions to CTV over over the decades. Uh, it's it's acknowledged and appreciated, and we deliver news twenty thousand hours of local news to Canadians every year, and twenty five thousand uh, hours of news on CP twenty four, BNN, and uh, CTV I have one hour now of channel. local news a day. One hour. Right. So a total of five hours in Saskatoon of live yeah. coverage from six to and, seven and, all week. Thank you. And, and, and I'm sorry I'd, we've I'd gone well over time here. Thank Madam you. Madam Chair, may I have one more quick one? I um, just encourage well, all the honourable members to engage with the CTV News app where there's news at all times of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Bibic. I think the question that Mr. War was asking was clear. He talks about local news. Not everyone can go streaming. Not everyone. A lot of people with low incomes cannot afford to go streaming. They have to depend on the television. He asked a simple question, and I think you gave him the answer. Um, Mr. Pibic, I'm curious. Do you do you support Bill C-11? That's the Online News Act. No, C-11 is the Online Streaming Act. Correct. Bill C-11 is yeah. the Online Streaming Act. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did support. Uh, the, the act in the sense that it was a, a good step towards um, you know fixing um, the broader issues, but it's only one step and far more is required. And do you support Bill C-18, the Online News Act? Um, yes. And again, that's just one step in a, in a but more a broader discussion is required in terms of leveling the playing field as between the Canadian broadcasters and the major internet platforms who derive so much revenue from Canadian consumers without contributing back to the ecosystem. So Bill C-11 uh, was created by the current government uh, to stifle innovation and creativity. Um, it shuts down YouTubers or digital first creators. Um, and it very much puts more money in the pockets of traditional broadcasters such as Bell Media. Uh, so it's no wonder then why you would support this bill because of course it stifles competition um, and very much acts in your favor. What's interesting though is that again, uh, Bell is an incredibly profitable company and already taking hundreds of millions of dollars from this government and yet still stands with its hands out for more for more and takes absolutely, you know, no, makes no qualms out of the fact that uh, creativity and innovation in this country is being stifled. And yet, interestingly enough, one of the talking points that you keep returning to is that this is one of the big problems in this country is that creativity and innovation and productivity are being stifled. Um, but you're actually a part of that problem by supporting Bill C-11. You're a part of stifling that. Uh, you're a part of holding us back from going into the future and instead insisting that a broadcasting act, which is incredibly antiquated in nature, is applied to the Internet. So with all due respect, you are a part of the problem. 
Uh, and it is for the sake of selfishness. It is for the sake of lining pockets with more money uh, that you want to be handed over based on the creative content that is being generated by these digital first creators and put out there. You want them to take 30% of their revenue and put it toward your antiquated model. I, I find that alarming. I, I find that very um, concerning that Bell is functioning in that matter while receiving hundreds of millions of dollars that's, from the government. Uh, I would say that's a pretty major mischaracterization of our position. Bell Media is in full transformation from being a traditional broadcaster to a digital media company. That would be the first point. And secondly, very quickly, I, I always very, very surprised um, with positions that would so evidently favor Disney's and the Netflix's and the Amazon's and the Apple's Mr. of the Vivek. world against good Canadian Mr. companies Vivek. that employ tens of thousands of Canadians. So, I mean, that's I'll, where I'll just, I'll just my conclude position with this. is. You, you stated yourself, you stated yourself, people don't want cable packages anymore. They want access to online streaming. Bill C-11 pulls people back from the future into an antiquated past. It's terrible legislation. Two minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Bibich, I think you've made clear to us today that you are not very concerned about the allegations of tokenism, racism, sexism, and ageism made against Bell Media. You've also made clear in your attempts to plug the CTV News app during your testimony here today that you want to make light of this and you don't want to take this very seriously. So what I'd like to say is that we have heard, I'm sure this is from all parties present in this process, a lot of concern from our constituents that by being customers of your internet services, your highly priced cell phone services, that they are financing a media operation that has shown a callous disregard for Canadian workers despite receiving $40 million in regulatory relief from this Liberal government, and also that we have seen uh, an, an attitude uh, of discrimination toward employees. So what would you say to consumers who are concerned that they are financing a uh, highly questionable media operation by engaging with your cell services and your internet services? Uh, unfortunately, uh, Chair, <laughs> the, the last part of the question actually broke as the... Uh, well, that's Is convenient for off. you to pretend you couldn't hear what I'm saying. Oh, that's, um, that's because uh, you're, again, you're being evasive, that, Chair, and you're going to offer Chair, another word salad. Please repeat the last sentence, Mr. Javad. Madam Chair, I've the, the question is very clear, Mr. Bibbit. Actually, I'm speaking, not you, sir. I'm speaking, not you, sir. Challenging my integrity. I am speaking. Sorry, I am Respect sorry. our democracy, order, Mr. Bibbit. Order both, Mr. Bibbit and Mr. Giovanni. Mr. Giovanni was repeating his question because you said you hadn't heard it. Let me just get back to to some order here. Mr. Giovanni, repeat your question. Yes. We've stopped the clock. Go ahead, Mr. Bibich. Thank Bibich. you. The question is for our many constituents across Canada who are concerned that by purchasing your cell services and your internet services, they are financing a highly questionable media company that has shown callous disregard for Canadian workers and an insensitivity to many allegations of discrimination. What do you have to say to those Canadians concerned about financing Bell Media? Madam Chair, I have deep respect for Parliament and for the committee's work, and I would never pretend not to hear a question if I'd heard it. And that I take issue with, and I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, it's, you know, if I say something, it's because I mean it. Now, earlier, the Honourable Member asked me about uh, diversity and the importance of it, and I gave a considered answer. It's a very important issue, and we are proud of the journey. Are you evading the question again after pretending you didn't hear it, and I repeated it, and you're still not answering it, Mr. Bibich? We're very proud of the services we provide to Canadians who subscribe. Millions of customers are with us, and we deliver excellent value to them. Thank you. I think uh, we have gone over time. <laughs>